This is Auto Trader UK, where we drive the latest, the greatest, giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So strap in, subscribe, and if you have been watching, don't stop. Don't ever stop. Hydrogen. We hear a lot about it, don't we? People say it's the fuel of the future. It's cleaner than petrol, more convenient than batteries, and it's the most abundant element in the universe. So, of course, it makes perfect sense that we should use it to power our cars. Well, we're gonna take a look today at why hydrogen does make sense, why it flopped completely, and whether there may or may not be a place for hydrogen in the future. Before we get into it, let me try and break down in very basic terms how a hydrogen car actually works at a very high level. You take the car, you rip out the engine, you whack in a fuel cell at a hydrogen tank, and then the fuel cell combines hydrogen from the tank with oxygen, which it sucks in from the air, to create electricity. Bish bash bosh. Once you have the electricity, you can then send that into a small battery pack for storage and connect that to an electric motor to drive the wheels of a car. Science, isn't it? But even though hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, it doesn't exist by itself. It likes to hang out with other things. It only exists with other elements like methane, CH4, ammonia, NH3, and water, H2O, which has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. If you wanna use the hydrogen atoms as fuel, you've gotta separate them from the oxygen atom. And to do that, there's a bunch of different techniques, all of which need some form of energy. Nothing comes for free. Now, one of these techniques is called electrolysis, and it's where you apply an electrical current to the water, you shock the water, which causes the hydrogen and oxygen to separate. Hydrogen is released from the negative anode and oxygen is released from the positive cathode. And if you can capture the hydrogen, the bubbles, then boom, you can store it in a tank and you're good to go. But hang on, what provides the energy for the electricity, for the electrolysis to shock the water? That's where we need to think carefully because this is a process that does need a lot of energy, which we normally get from, guess where, fossil fuels like coal and gas. But it's also possible to use renewable energy like wind and solar, of course, but it's a very inefficient process. Picture it like this. To make the hydrogen fuel, you'd lose 30% of your energy during electrolysis and another 26% through storing, transporting, and distributing it, leaving you with a 52% efficiency. And it's also really inefficient once you get it into the car as well. So by the end of it, from well to tank and tank to wheel, you're only getting 22% of that energy to the wheels. You've thrown away 78% of the energy you started with. It's a bit like going to fetch some water from a well. You walk there, expend energy, you bottle it, you walk back, maybe you filter it and clean it, and then in order to fill this cup 100%, you, you fill it all the way to the top, but then before you take a sip of it, what you do is you throw 80% of it away. And then you take a sip. I mean, how much sense does that make? And waste is obviously bad for the environment, but it's also bad for business. What's the point in making electricity for a new system if most of that energy is just gonna be thrown away? Obviously, using sustainable energy is better, there's less pollution, but again, generating that energy costs money and time and effort, so you wanna use it as efficiently as possible without chucking it away. Anyway, that's the crux of the hydrogen situation right now. If you can produce hydrogen sustainably and you don't think that wasting electricity is a bad thing, then hydrogen does make some sense. And I can see a world in which it could work. For example, if we had a ton of, say, nuclear power stations just firing energy everywhere, left, right, and center, and we had an energy surplus, then it's potentially a great fuel because of how useful it can be for our transport situation. But there's another big problem with hydrogen. Even if you ignore the waste and you listen to all the very persuasive arguments from the fuel cell advocates all around the world and you buy into all the decades of research that's gone into making fuel cells smaller, cheaper, and more efficient, here's the bottom line, right? People still aren't buying the cars. Essentially, there are two, two fuel cell cars commercially available globally. Two, the Hyundai Nexo and the Toyota Mirai. 
How many different models of electric cars are there? Around 200. Now, how many of those Mirais and Nexos did we buy in the UK last year? We bought 12. 12 people bought a Nexo. Or even 12 people, 12 companies probably bought a Nexo. And I bet there'll be more than 12 people in the comments below saying how great hydrogen is, but how many of those people have actually gone out and bought the cars? Not many. On the other hand, we bought around 190,000 electric cars last year, which added up to 12% of all cars sold. The 12 hydrogen cars added up to 0.0007%. It's not a price issue either. The Mirai isn't outrageous. It costs 50 grand, steep, but not really in the grand scheme of electric cars. It's got 180 horsepower, a 400 mile range, and you can refuel it in just a few minutes. There should be people all over the place that want this thing, but they don't because where are you gonna fill it up? Where are the hydrogen fuel stations in the UK? We asked Celia Greaves, the CEO of the UK Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association, and she said there are only 14, and she blames the government. She said that their support for hydrogen fueling infrastructure is a joke compared to the incentives offered by the EV recharging network. And because of that, companies are bailing out. Honda, for example, has announced it's gonna say sayonara to its Clarity fuel cell program this year because of low demand. And Mercedes in 2020 said off we design to its F cell program, so we're not gonna see the hydrogen GLC. Land Rover was supposed to be testing a fuel cell defender by the end of last year, but that looks like it's done too. Even Toyota, the chief global flag waivers for hydrogen, have said that hydrogen cars will only account for the low thousands of cars by 2030. They did tease us with a hydrogen powered version of the GR Yaris, which ran the fuel in its internal combustion engine, but they've also said that that is only intended for motorsport use, and they're not gonna bring that through for commercial use anytime soon. One of the problems is that fuel cells are very, very expensive. You don't need a big battery, but you do need a battery of some description, so that costs money. But also, the fuel cells themselves contain some very rare metals, specifically platinum group metals, which include, well, platinum and iridium. And iridium is one of the rarest elements on the Earth's crust, so not cheap. Fair enough, they are getting cheaper, but so are battery electric cars. By 2026, it's been said that battery-powered cars will be cheaper than internal combustion engine cars. And by then, we might have another big jump forward in the technology. We might start seeing solid-state batteries, which will give longer range and faster charging. But that's not to say that we're not gonna see hydrogen-powered vehicles at some point in the future. The hydrogen boys are regrouping, and they've realized that you know, even if cars might not be the way forward for them right now, there are other vehicles that make a lot of sense for hydrogen, specifically vans, buses, trains, and maybe even planes. If you walk down Oxford Street right now in London, you might see one of 20 hydrogen powered buses that are being tested by Transport for London. Okay, they're also testing 500 electric powered buses, but it's a start. And in China, fuel cell lorries are also becoming a thing. 7% of their zero emissions vehicles out of 10,000 were fuel cell vehicles. Eventually, if this keeps progressing, you might end up seeing scale in production, which will bring the price down, and also importantly, deliver a few places where you can actually fill these things up. Toyota calls it the hydrogen society, like a big party, basically, where hydrogen powered cars can't come and join the fun until the party's really swinging, and the party will only really get swinging if buses, vans, trucks, and lorries show exactly how good the hydrogen party can be. At least, that's what they hope. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Are you team hydrogen? Do you think it's a complete waste of time? Are you team batteries? Or are you team something else entirely? Don't forget, you can watch my video on synthetic fuels by clicking the link down below. As always, don't forget to tell me what you think. Hit like, subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Peace.